help spot eating disorders early. It's thought that around one and a quarter million people in the UK are affected by eating disorders and they, those disorders often have a significant impact on teeth. I've got Rianne Lovell, who's in Neath and is recovered from anorexia and bulimia. Rianne, hello. Hello. Hi. And I've got Dr Kieran Armin, who's a speciality registrar in restorative, restorative dentistry at Glenfield Hospital and Birmingham Dental Hospital and has been doing some work with the eating disorder charity BEAT. Dr Armin, Kieran, hello. Hi. Good afternoon, hello. Hi. Um, Rianne, um, Tell me about what you um, experienced when you were ill and how the dentist, your dentist, played a role in your treatment, your recovery, your thoughts around your illness. So um, I suffered with um, anorexia and bulimia for about 15 years. I'm um, 10 years into my recovery now and I've had significant problems with my teeth as a result of my eating disorder. So um I had a good relationship with my dentist, so a few years into my eating disorder, I moved um, to Wales, and eating disorder, I moved, and he kind of asked me a lot of questions about my teeth, which were rapidly declining, um, asking in terms of, you know, what what was causing the problems, um, you know, from his perspective, I guess on first look, he thought, you know, I was eating all the wrong foods or doing something which was obviously damaging my teeth, um, and we had a conversation in terms of my teeth were clearly lacking calcium and obviously the regular vomiting was having a significant impact on my teeth so we were able to have that conversation and talk about the effect that the eating disorder was having on my teeth. Did you find it easier to talk to your dentist about this because it was almost focused on one specific part of your body Um, and so therefore you wouldn't have to look at the whole issue? Did that make it easier? Yeah, in some ways, I think it, it was difficult. Um, it, there was a lot of kind of shame, I guess, attached with what was happening to my teeth because I was obviously regularly having a lot of infections. I was losing teeth. A lot of my teeth were crumbling. And it almost um, made it easier that, we, you know, who was focused on that and I was able to explain what, what was the true cause of that as opposed to it being... Um, me eating all the wrong foods, et cetera, I was able to explain, obviously, that I was vomiting kind of 10, 15 times a day, and that was obviously having an impact on my teeth. But, yeah, to be able to have someone who I was kind of able to be open and honest with was, was helpful and it was a good focus. When, on... when your dentist reacted to what you were saying, um, what was he, she, I'm sorry, I don't know if it was a he or a she, um, what was their reaction like that encouraged you to continue talking about it and being truthful about what was happening? Yeah, well, I think he was really non... He wasn't judgmental in terms of the situation. Um, I guess I was honest in the sense that, you know, it was an entrenched issue um, for me, so it wasn't something that was going to change overnight. So we talked about kind of things that I could try and do to prevent further damage or kind of damage limitation, I guess. So that was just really helpful because I wasn't um, made to feel bad about it. Um, You know, we talked about things like obviously not brushing your teeth immediately after vomiting, trying to take some maybe calcium supplements. Um, Yeah, so he was just just helpful and non-judgmental about it, really. Mm, Stay with me. Um, Dr Armin Kieran, um, this is important, isn't it, in the way that any medical professional um, interacts with a patient, that non-judgmental attitude? Yeah, so, Naga, like like you mentioned, it's it's massive. Um, And what I don't encourage people to do with eating disorders is um, try and be as open and honest as possible to their dental team um, they're more likely to, you know, be able to help. So your dental team can be trusted to help help an individual and will not judge you over any symptoms you, you're having. Um, and I think you hit hit the nail on the head, really. I mean, 1.25 million people, um, you know, are affected by eating disorders, and it's you know, non-discriminatory, so no one could be affected. And anyone with an eating disorder can attend a dentist. And the dentist might be the first person who actually picks up signs related to an eating disorder, whether that's dental erosion, sensitivity, pain, discomfort, um, tooth decay, 
um, are all kind of frequent signs that dentists do see. And I think Rianne uh, touched upon it, that she was very conscious about the damage that had been done to her teeth and gums um, in terms of, you know, uh, losing teeth or um, th them actually being damaged. What kind of work do you do, Kieran, in terms of uh, restoring... I mean, res you're a speciality registrar in restorative dentistry. Yeah, so correct. So I think well, I need to go on to prevention first. Mm. So really educating patients in terms of, you know, trying to prevent dental disease and, you know, tell them what's going on in their mouths and, and saying how things can be prevented from progressing further. So, you know, things I've detected really early, you can um, provide preventive advice um, and hopefully that's just amenable um, for prevention alone. Um, later on down the line, when um, things have deteriorated further, you're looking at more invasive treatment, which can be prolonged and protracted. Um, and you do also have to take that in consideration to the patient's um, overall health care. So they may have multiple other health care um, commitments and appointments. Um, so, for instance, in terms of prevention in itself, um, you know, we could potentially prescribe high fluoride toothpaste and mouth rinses. Um, we and spoke about you know, avoiding brushing teeth straight after vomiting um, and consumption of high sugary foods as teeth are you know, weakened straight after. Um, also, you know, using a straw place at the back of the mouth is, is quite an easy thing to do and um, once whilst consuming sugary drinks um, so you know your teeth are less exposed to, to sugary attacks and therefore can reduce the risk of tooth decay um, I think you know going down the line where teeth have been you know, really affected uh, you, you are you know initially just treating symptoms so getting patients out of pain and discomfort and stabilizing them to a point um, you know where they're comfortable mm. and then you know over a period of like a bit of stability, then we can talk about um, trying to build their teeth up, um, whether that be covering overexposed, say, dentine, which is quite sensitive, to building them up with white filling material. So being quite conservative initially, um, so that, you know, the restorative burden for that patient is less down the line. Um, and then, you know, more invasive treatment might be a second option later on. Um, so that's, that's what we kind of look, look for. Let me bring in Karen Coates, who's a dental advisor at the Oral Health Foundation. Um, and that foundation is calling for dentists to raise awareness about the early signs. Karen, hello. Um, hello. Hi. What do you mean um, you want dentists to raise awareness? Um, well, certainly um, if somebody has got the signs of an eating disorder um, in their mouth, because obviously it, the erosion will show, um, about raising and how to raise that with with the patient and do it in a, a very sympathetic way um but obviously that that needs training and it needs um you know perhaps another member of the dental team to to be taking over so it's not coming from um you know the the, the person in the white coat so to speak uh rather than maybe a, a dental nurse or a hygienist who may be sort of nearer the, the patient's age. So to try and find the right person to be putting, putting it across um, in a sympathetic way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how is there training at the moment for dentists to recognise this? As far as I'm aware, um, erosion from vomiting will be mentioned in the training about uh, enamel erosion. So eating disorders would be mentioned as part of that. But that's as far as it goes. Hmm. OK. And are dentists um, taught or trained as part of their training to recognise, to be more holistic in, just generally in their kind of treatment of patients? Yes. I mean, the, there, there have been many studies um, and over the years we've become more aware that... Um, Often the mouth can be a mirror of the body and a lot of things that happen in the body can show in the mouth. Um, and that's, that's for, for numerous um, conditions. Um, obviously, with eating disorders, it's more of, um, you know, the visual damage that you can see um, happening to the enamel. Obviously, the, 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 you can get dry mouth and other, other things, you know, teeth decaying where, you know, you may have somebody who's had really good um, uh, teeth and gums for, for many, many years. And all of a sudden, it starts to um, change and there's some, 
sort of failings there and more decay than you would expect and more erosion. And obviously these are signs that you want to pick up on because there's something going on you know, in the rest of the body mm. and, um, you know, picking up on those those signs early will obviously help to, somebody what, to get the treatment. Karen, what do they do when they see the signs? I mean, you can you, they can do the work they have to do in terms yeah. of oral hygiene and, you know, dentistry, but what do they do? What's the responsibility or what's the advice for them if they say uh, are in the company of someone like Rianne when she was struggling, um, when she yeah. was ill? What what should they do? What's the guidance? Um, and well, realistically, if you see somebody that has got the the signs of um, acid erosion from from uh, you know particularly vomiting, normally a dentist would would prescribe a higher fluoride. Uh, oh no, sorry, pain. I don't mean in terms sorry. of the dentistry. I mean in terms okay, of sorry. where you'd refer. No, no, my fault. Where you'd refer someone? Should they then say, I I think I should direct you to this charity or I should direct you to this specialist? Yeah, I think that that's something that, that, that needs to be looked at. And um, I've been, um, you know, liaising with, with our uh, team here at, uh, at the foundation and looking at whether we can, you know, produce a leaflet with uh, further information on so that it, it's not coming across as a lecture from your dentist who, you know, it could be... 10, 15 years older than you and it, it you know, may come across as a bit sort of lectury. Mm. So um, having something that has got all that information for somebody who, you know, maybe never spoken about this before, doesn't know where to turn, nobody's ever picked up on it because, you know, it is, a, it is an illness that people hide and hide very well in a lot of cases. So it may be that the dentist has picked it up maybe before, you know, anybody else has kind of seen the other signs of, of eating disorders. Uh, Rianne, just a final thought from you, I think. You know, you've come out the other side of this illness, um, but there are many others who will be listening thinking, OK, I've got a dentist appointment due or I should have one. I don't know if I want to have this conversation if, if dentists are doing this. You know, it, I don't know if I want help yet. What would you say to them? I think it's really difficult when you've got an entrenched eating disorder. Um, mm. But obviously, we, you know, and self care just goes by the wayside when you're really poorly. Um, but ensuring that you still attend those appointments is really important because, you know, I've, obviously I've lost a number of teeth, but I could have lost an awful lot more if I hadn't kind of gone to the dentist. But it would be really good, I think, to see more link up between dentists and medical professionals. You know, it would have been useful for me to have my care team involved with my dentist or vice versa so that they could advise each other as well. But, you know, for those who have still got an eating disorder, it's just really important that the dental health side of things isn't completely forgotten about. Yeah. And Kieran, you're doing this work with the eating disorder charity Beat. So I'm assuming this is to that end that Rianne was saying. Yeah, so completely. So currently Beat, the UK's eating disorder charity, is currently working on a webinar series to educate different health sectors about health uh, which includes dentists, dietitians and pharmacists. Um, and the aim of this training will be to help professionals identify the signs of an eating disorder and understand how to support their patients. Um, uh, it's so important, collaborative, mm. um, collaborative working with other medical practitioners. Um, I do tend to liaise with patient permission um, with their general medical practitioners, the psychiatrists, and see how I can input into that. And so patients do, you know, receive holistic care. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's a discussion that is definitely worth having. Kieran, Dr. Kieran Armin, um, thank you very much. Special, speciality Registrar and Restorative Dentistry at Glenfield Hospital and Birmingham Dental Hospital. Um, Karen Coates, Dental Advisor at the Oral Health Foundation, thank you very much. And Rianne Lovell, um, thank you very much for sharing your story and um, just being so honest about it and like the, being so real about it. So thank you very much as well. Thanks. Um, if you have been affected by the issues that we were just